I don't know if you uh, know the story of 33-year-old Drew Maggi. The Pirates are the most surprising story in baseball early season. I, they are somehow, I think it's nine or ten games over 500. The Buckos. And uh, Drew Maggi, if you did not see this viral video of his long-winded manager in the minor leagues uh, giving a very long speech that ended <laughs> with telling Drew Maggi that he is going to the major leagues after 13 years in the minor leagues. It is a fun story. It's the Crash Davis story, Stugatz, because the minor leagues are so tough. We have read recently about finally minor leaguers getting some money, and even that maximum money in AAA is $37,000 a year. So super happy for you, Drew, and thanks for being on – on with us. Uh, let's just play the video real quick of the long min uh, long winded manager surprising <laughs> Drew Maggi uh, in the clubhouse. Great pleasure that I get to promote uh, my first person to the major leagues and someone that is tremendously uh, important to this group and someone that exemplifies grit, a choice to continue to fight for what he wants in life, and a lot of that is having the right perspective. And so, um, so Maggi. You're gonna get an opportunity to uh, Drew, you look stunned there in the photo in the video. I gotta be honest, not long winded. I well, thought that was, was probably edited. done. No, it was uh, edited. There uh, was a minute oh, and a yeah, half yeah. before uh, that. Uh, 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 Drew, did you know he was talking about you when in the build up to we're going to send someone to the major leagues? Uh, I didn't, you know, I 13 years in the minor league, you, you hear a lot of those speeches. So never, yeah, completely unexpected there. How many years ago did you stop thinking it was about you with those speeches? <laughs> Probably like seven, eight years ago. I mean, I, we, I've had, I've seen a thousand of those. So eventually I, I mean, right there, I was thinking, all right, who we got, who we, who's going. And then when I heard my name, it was, I mean, body numb, whole thing. Did you think it was going to happen for you? Or had you really given up anything that resembled hope on it ever happening? Well, I mean, I, I've always had hope. I mean, that was, I mean, why I stayed in the game. I mean, it definitely, as the years went on, it, it went, it came down less and less, like, you know, Maybe I'm just a minor leaguer. Maybe it's just, you know, this is kind of my path. This is what I'm I'm meant to do, kind of play out my minor league career, you know, kind of mentor younger players. And then, you know, I love baseball, so I probably would have stayed in the game. But, you know, deep down was like, you know, there's got to be something bigger, you know, because I, I kept hanging on, you know, something crazy would always happen to kind of, you know, get me to play in the season because there was a lot of seasons where, you know, we had prospects or, you know, a lot of guys in the system that the team wanted to promote. So, you know, I was stuck on the bench a bunch and, you know, something would happen to where I would get a chance to play and I would play well enough to, you know, kind of, you know, keep me alive for the next season. So it deep down, I, I had a feeling that, you know, something, something big's got to come out of this and, you know, it's crazy. The last 24 hours, 48 hours has been, I mean, I didn't expect any of this. What has it been? I mean, just the phone calls, the, the, my old teammates reaching out guys that I haven't talked to in 10 years that, you know, just flashing back to kind of moments with those teammates where I was, um, calls to my family, to my friends. I mean, it's been, it's been emotional. I've been, you know, I've been okay. And then I'm like, I'll think about things like, holy smokes, like this is, this is really happening. You know, I've had to, you know, I woke every, every day that I wake up, I'm kind of, you know, I got to check the window and look out because I, I can see PNC from my window. So every day I have to look out and be like, all right, yeah, this is, this is real. It's really happening. So yeah, it's just been, it's been a really emotional, really exciting. I mean, I'm I'm on top of the world right now. Drew, Crash Davis made it 21 days in the major leagues. What's your over-under? 
Shoot, if I had to bet, I mean, I'm I'm an over guy. I never bet under. Same. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> uh, who did you call first, Drew, when you heard? Well, I called my dad. He didn't answer. You know, the Italian family, so we're all everyone's always doing something. So, <laughs> dad didn't answer. Called him again. Didn't answer. Called my brother. Then I called my mom. Didn't answer. Finally got a hold of my mom, and I was in double A at the time. So. You know, I she answered and she's like, "Hello." I I don't know what she was doing, but I'm like, "Hey, mom." And you know, I was or I'd broken down already. So, and she's like, "Are you okay?" And I said, "Mom, I'm going up." And she goes, "Oh, you're going up to Indy because Indianapolis is the Triple A team." <laughs> I go, "No, mom, I'm going to the big leagues." And she, yeah, we just we had a a great moment, and she couldn't believe it. She was freaking out. And so that was special. Who was the most emotional family member? Bo, probably. I mean, Bo, Bo's my uh, my brother right under me. I have five brothers, so he's he's been. I play with I play with him in college. Um, you know, he played in the minor leagues for four years, so he kind of he understands how hard it is. And when I saw him on the field uh, two days ago. He was, I mean, he was flooding. So I was, I was like, geez. So he got me and he, uh, he's an emotional guy. <laughs> what is the worst part of 13 years in the minor leagues? Like what are some of the details that people don't understand about what your sacrifice has been? I mean, I, I think as you get older, you know, it gets really challenging because you know, you're that older guy on the team. You're you're still doing the bus rides, um, you know, and you kind of have to you have to mute a lot of it. I mean, when we when we first went into Altoona this year, we had like a little signing thing before the year, you know, before our game started, and a lot of the fans are like, "Oh, are are you a player coach? Are you coaching now?" So I mean, you just kind of laugh it off and you know, kind of, you can't let it bother you, but I think that stuff. And then just, you know, the overall sacrifice, you know, I'm in some small city. I mean, relationships are tough to hold on to. Um, you're away from your family. Um, you know, there's a million different things you can do in life. So you kind of, as you get older and, you know, you think about, you know, life after baseball, you know, you obviously want to make money and, and be able to support people. So it just gets more challenging with that. And, you know, your days are also numbered, you know, in every sports, any sport that you play, your days are numbered. So I think just the overall thoughts of, of that kind of creeping in are probably the most challenging. You've been in the major league clubhouse. You've already made an appearance inside. Yeah. Yeah. I was in there on Sunday. And the difference between that and the worst of the minor league experiences? Everything. <laughs> I, mean, yeah. I mean, name it there. I mean, there's a sauna. And I walked by, I walked, I walked to the bathroom, and I looked to my left, and there was a sauna. And I go, oh, my God, there's a sauna in here. I, <laughs> I got to get in there. What is, what is the worst of the hotels, the worst of the cities, the worst of the bus rides? Uh, I mean, I've been, I've been on a 13 hour bus, um, had to play that day. Um, you know, a lot of storytelling, a lot of beers going, a lot of uh, cards going on. Um, I mean, hotel rooms can be, some of them smell and there's bugs in some, I mean, then you're, you know, you're rooming with another teammate. So Sometimes you don't get the luck of the draw there. Um, yeah, I mean, just yeah, everything. Everything in the big leagues is what they say. I mean, at least from my experience so far, it's. I mean, it's anything you're you're in the show. Have you stolen anything yet from like major league clubhouse or thought like, oh, this is a bunch of free water? Let bag me like hoard this just in case. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Steal everything. I took a razor day one. I was like, that a boy. I mean, yeah, I've been. I mean, they have everything. Cologne. I mean, like, geez, I, 
definitely get my hands on whatever I can. <laughs> Cologne. Uh, Drew, congratulations. <laughs> Thank you. 4,494 plate appearances. Hopefully you get the first major league bat tonight. Thank you, sir. Awesome. Thank you, guys. Thank you.